A paradigm shift has been going on in healthcare. That's what we call digital health, a cultural transformation. In that, the roles of patients and physicians, even the tools that they are using, have been changing. Normally, I talk to medical professionals, policymakers, government officials, inventors, developers, how to change that, how to facilitate this transition. But I thought, why not come up with a few tips and suggestions for patients about what they can do to facilitate the same transition and maybe also how to impress their doctors about their knowledge, approach and perspective of digital health. So here are six tips how to impress your doctor in digital health. Number one, just desire to get engaged with your care. The role of patients used to be a traditional passive role, meaning you wait for a symptom to appear and only after that you go and ask for medical help. But empowered patients, proactive patients have been appearing, millions of them worldwide. And now it's becoming a new role. And in that, you can very much get engaged with your care. After all, it's about your life. It's about your health, your lifestyle, your disease management. So of course you want to take active part in all that, but it's not your fault that you've never been encouraged to do so. The system, the, the way healthcare has been designed just didn't allow that. But now it's different because of digital health, because of this revolution, because of how the roles of physicians are changing from key holders to the ivory tower of medicine to becoming guides for their patients in the jungle of information, you have a chance to finally get engaged. Just desire to get engaged with your care. Number two, know your resources. Just don't Google it is an awful advice any physician can give. You should definitely Google it in the smart way. And if you go to your doctor saying that, well, I found this and that piece of information online, you can impress your doctor by also saying, because I know what resources the information is coming from. I know how to differentiate between a website, with medical editors and supervision, with an impressum, with contact details, with clear advertisement policy, with a transparent way of providing information, and just a random website with medical stuff written on that. You know the differences between the two. Moreover, you know which social media channels are reliable and worthy of your attention. You know your patient's colors and why you are following them. So when you bring information to the attention of your medical professional, you will be able to tell why you chose that particular resource. You can very much impress your doctor with that knowledge. Number three, only measure data for a purpose. Using a digital head sensor, a smartwatch, a fitness tracker is not something trendy. It's not something attractive that you should do. You should not if there is no purpose behind that. And the purpose is about improving your lifestyle or doing a better job during your health or disease management. If you know why you use a device, you want to improve your sleep quality and you want to understand what kind of sleep, sleep quality you have right now and what kind of things you can do to improve that, you want to exercise more you want to meditate more, you want to know uh, certain details about your lifestyle, genetic risk, any of these, then you have a purpose to use a digital health sensor for. And by bringing that purpose to the attention of your doctor, again, you can very much impress them. And even more importantly, by doing this, by bringing these questions and issues about using a digital health technology to the next doctor-patient meeting, you can help create a partnership with your medical professional. And that's what all, but the whole digital health revolution is all about. Creating a partnership instead of having an old hierarchy. Number four, be aware of your genetic drug sensitivities. I know this point only refers to those who had some sort of a genetic test, a pharmacogenetic service, to learn what kind of drugs, medications they would have a serious major side effect for. Because the next time your medical professional wants to prescribe your medication, you will be able to show them a list of medications you have a genetic sensitivity for, which means if they prescribe that medication for you, you would have major side effects, maybe even get hospitalized without anyone making a mistake. But by being that conscious about your genetic drug sensitivities, you can help them avoid having such issues and putting even more burden on the healthcare system. Number five, understand AI's limitations. A patient in 2023 would not just Google their symptoms, they would of course ask ChatGPT and other AI-based large language models what they think about that disease, that symptom, uh, that diagnosis. 
and maybe you can also bring that information to the attention of your medical professional. But AI, especially ChatGPT-like tools, have major limitations. They are very good at collecting information, pieces of data from the whole over the internet and textbooks before 2021. But whether it's a verified information or not, it depends on your ability to verify that information. It depends on the ability of your physician to verify that information. So while such AI tools can be a good assistant in the process of health and disease management, take it with a pinch of salt. And even more importantly, discuss everything you find in those ChatGPT-like tools with your physician. So then you can discuss AI's limitations together. And number six, own your health records. Healthcare is about your precious data, your electronic medical records, the information, the data, the genetic test results, the lab test results you have at home. All these pieces of information and data, these are the ones that can contribute to the digital health and the AI revolution. Without your data, there is no technological revolution. So own it. You should know what data, what medical records exist in your own IT system at your home. These are called electronic health records and what data exists in the IT infrastructure of your hospitals and healthcare organizations. Those are called electronic medical records, but both belong to you and you should know how to manage it. The reason why I told you these six tips and suggestions is not just to impress your doctor so they would feel like they are working with a new kind of patient, but to improve your chances to have a long and healthy life. By doing these things, by getting engaged with your care, you are becoming a very important stakeholder of the healthcare delivery process. While patients, I think, used to be the most underused resources of healthcare, with these tiny tips and suggestions, we can finally become the ones that share responsibility with our physicians and that build real-life partnerships instead of the old traditional hierarchy. So, in one medical team, finally, patients and physicians can work to solve medical problems. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get notified about every single new video we come up with. And also, please go to medicalfuturist.thinkific.com where you will find our two courses, the Digital Health course and our newest one, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Healthcare. See you there.